And let me tell you, and let me tell you what else happened. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo, the Lucky Ferals. Good morning, Simba. Simba's been making strange noises at the birds. Simba, you look okay. You look okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. You look fine. You look fine. Simba's worried because he hasn't washed his face yet or taken a bath today. You look good, Simba. You look good, Simba. You look good. You're handsome. Simba sounds like a bird. He's doing his bird calls. Simba, you calling for the birds? Simba, make another bird call. Do another bird call. Simba, do another bird call. Call the birds over. Hear him? Sounds like a bird. That one sounded like a cat. And there's bugs flying around too outside. Good morning, Stella. This is where Stella slept all night. She slept on the corner of the bed. She likes it here because it gets a really nice breeze. I had the windows open all night and there was a really nice breeze that came through. And that was Simba jumping on the bed. It is 10.20 a.m. and that is how Simba spends a good portion of his day trying to get under the refrigerator. It's 4 p.m. I just walked past Boo's room and this is what I saw. It is 9.53 a.m. and I'm getting all of these automatic feeders ready for the cats. So they're having raw food for dinner today and then for breakfast tomorrow, they're having freeze dried raw. And then I'm finalizing these with a few treats in each one. And I'm probably gonna put some crunchies in for dinner tomorrow. I should be back before dinner tomorrow, but just in case there's a delay, I'm gonna put some crunchies there so they'll have crunchies out of the feeder for dinner tomorrow. It's a lot of work for four cats, but uh, these feeders are awesome and they definitely make traveling a lot easier, especially for an overnight trip. This is what the finalized feeders look like. So here is a scoop of raw food with a few treats, some dried minnows and a few crunchies. And then tomorrow is some freeze-dried raw um, with a few treats, some dried minnows and some crunchies. And then tomorrow is a bunch of crunchies with a few treats. So uh, this will be dinner, breakfast, and dinner. And it's much harder to set these up when you have a cat trying to get into them. It's 4 p.m. Today is the kind of day that just flew by so fast. I can't believe it's already 4 p.m. And here's Splash. He's laying on the bed. He's so comfortable. And let me show you who's laying on the bed with him. There's Stella and Simba. I put the tablet out for Stella this morning because she wanted to watch some videos. So she's laying by it. And there's Simba. And there's Splash. And there's Boo. All four cats are hanging out in the bedroom. And look at what Boo has done to this cat tower. But he likes scratching it. He likes scratching the wood. And I have been looking for a new one. Um, but I'm still looking. I'm not going to buy one just because, oh, here's a cat tower. Let me buy it. I'm looking for something that I want to fit this space and something with features that the cats will like. So these are all large cats. And it's important for them to have large platforms. Some of the platforms on the cat towers are just too small for these cats because they are all big cats. Some cats are small cats. These are big cats. 
And out of all of the cats, Splash is the biggest. Splash is a very big boy. And then Boo is the second biggest. And then Stella. And then Simba. Look how Simba's laying. <laughs> He's laying with his paws in the air. Simba's sleeping with his mommy. Look how happy Simba looks. I wonder what he's dreaming about. Look at his little teeth. Boo likes to be near an open window. It is 9.07 a.m. And I'm sorry there's reflections on the glass. But there's Hydrox. He's looking for some breakfast. I've been giving him food the past few days, but he hasn't been eating it. But I was outside this morning, and there's no food in the automatic feeder, so I have to see if I have to refill that. But Hydrox's fur has grown back in. And um, looks like he's been grooming himself on the side there. Again, with the reflections, it's hard to see, but it looks like he's been pulling out some, some fur on the side where he's been grooming himself. So I'm going to put some food together for him. It's 9.11 a.m. and I just gave Hydrox some food to eat. So he's getting some raw turkey with a whole bunch of supplements mixed in and a little bit of canned food mixed in also. So hopefully he'll eat that. It is now 9.31. The inside cats ate their breakfast. And now Hydrox is having his second meal, so he's having some of the wholehearted chicken and tuna. Because when I came back upstairs, he was meowing at the back door, and that usually means he's still hungry. So when Hydrox is not hungry, he does not meow at the back door. When he's hungry, he meows at the back door. So hopefully he'll eat that. So right now it's about 10 p.m. And I've been hanging out with the cats, relaxing for a, maybe like a half hour now. And Splash has been meowing at me. I was like, Splash, you want some crunchies? And he meowed. And he's been letting me pet him. Like this. He lets me pet him. This is like the fourth or fifth time he's been letting me pet him. And let me tell you, and let me tell you what else happened. So I was petting Splash really nicely. Like I was just petting Splash and the two of us were minding our own business. It was just me and Splash. And then Boo came up to Splash out of nowhere and just started beating him up. It just started smacking him. I was like, what are you doing, Boo? So uh, then Boo backed away, but that's not right. It's not right. Right, Splash? Why did Boo hit you like that? Because he's being mean, right? Right, Splash? Boo's being mean to you? Meanwhile, look at this. This place has turned into just like, it's like a playground for cats. There's just cat stuff everywhere, right, Stella? But they're having a good time. They're having like a little party. And there's Simba. Simba's been hanging out by the open window. How you doing, Simba? Simba, you're so handsome. 
Watch this, watch this. That's how the cats know they're in trouble. If I point at them, they know they're in trouble. Except <laughs> you okay, Bo? Stella keeps swatting at Boo tonight. I don't know what's going on, but watch this. <laughs> Stella is like, how dare you point at me? Stella's all ready for crunchies. The cats are all eating their crunchies and the light is flickering because the television is on. I have it on mute right now. And there's Boo. Hydrox and Boo, the Lucky Ferals.
Stella, you got them all? Did you get them all out of the feeder? Looks like you got them all. There's like one left in there. You gonna get the other one? You don't want it? Okay, you guys are done. You got them all? I gotta go feed Hydrox and Ditto. They're meowing for me. Do you hear them meowing? Okay. Good job, Stella. You are so smart. Stella, you are the smartest cat. Hydrox and Boo, the Lucky Ferals. It is 8.15 p.m. and I just made a whole bunch of homemade raw food for the cats. I have five sheet pans full of scoops in the freezers. Um, so that's about five weeks worth of food for them uh, because they get the homemade food once a day and then once a day they get um, commercial raw and then once a week they get some kind of canned food it's usually fish in a can 
um, and I find that to be good uh, for them. It gives them good variety and it helps um, just extend the raw food that I make. Otherwise, I'd be making raw food for them about every two weeks. Right now, I make it about once a month and I would be making it every two to three weeks, which um, takes more time and my schedule has been ridiculous, so this really helps a lot. There's Hydrox. I know you can't see his plate or his head, but he's already eating some of the homemade raw food. It's 8.29 p.m. now. I just went outside to take some of the garbage out from making the raw food, and Hydrox wants more. So he's having a second serving. It seems that he loves this raw food that I just made. It is 9 p.m. And I'm sitting down for the first time in hours. I just finished cleaning up the kitchen after making raw food for the cats, but I had so many distractions between Stella and Simba just getting under my feet in the beginning and then a bunch of phone calls. It took me twice as long as it should have taken me, but next time maybe what I'll do is just uh, turn my phone off and put the cats uh, in a room with the door shut before I start. But um, Stella was uh, in the bedroom, but Simba, but I had to put Simba in the bedroom. And I tried putting Stella in the bedroom, but she escaped. So her and Splash were downstairs. Um, but they were really waiting by the door. But the minute I opened the door to put the trays of fresh raw food in the freezer downstairs, they ran upstairs. So then I had to uh, eventually put Stella in the bedroom with Simba. And um, that's where they stayed the rest of the time. And Splash was upset about that, so he kept meowing at me. And Boo was just wondering what was going on. We also had a live stream today. And I think it started around noon, and it just ended at 9. And I felt bad because toward the end it was just an empty bed because none of the cats were on it. Um, but I did want to give a shout out to C.R. Barboni for his generous super chat and also to Carlos De Luca for his generous super chat. I want to thank you guys so much for your support of this channel and for your support of the cats. All the donations go to help buy cat food and cat supplies and stuff like that. So all the cats want to eat their dinner and that's what we're going to do. I'm going to put dinner together for the cats and they're going to eat some food. It's about 10.45 a.m. right now, and here's Boo. I just walked in the room, and he's been hanging out here, but this is what he does when he sees a camera. He has to get down. And here's Stella. Stella's hanging out on the scratch and roll. Cats had breakfast a little while ago. So now they're just kind of relaxing. It's 11.22 a.m. Let me tell you what just happened. So Simba was on the cat tower, and Stella jumped on the cat tower, started beating him up. She just started smacking him for no reason. So then Simba got mad and he started smacking her and then she jumped down and he went after her and then out of nowhere Splash comes running in the room and he pins Simba to the ground and starts biting the back of his neck and I look down and the two of them are just like right below me. Simba's pinned to the ground, Splash is like biting the back of his neck like, how dare you try to attack your mother? And then when I picked up my camera, which just happened to be here on the table with me, uh, then Splash backed up from Simba. And uh, so now Splash is here staring at Simba. But this goes to show you the complex relationships that cats have and how they will defend each other. And, um, you know, like Splash will take care of Stella. And he's like, how dare you? try to attack her even though Stella attacked Simba for no reason when he was on top of the cat tower but Stella likes to do that for some reason I don't know why she likes to do that I don't know where she went she ran away what are you doing Splash what you doing it's 11 48 a.m. I gave Simba a blueberry Simba you gonna eat that blueberry it's a dried blueberry it's 1 10 p.m. I'm trying to get some work done and this is Stella's new thing so I just washed my hands a little while ago like right before I sat down I washed my hands and Stella just loves the smell of the soap on my hands 
I was using the, um, I think it's Mrs. Meyers watermelon soft soap. It was like foaming hand soap. It's definitely watermelon. So Stella, Stella likes to sit next to me when I work. So I give her the chair next to me. Because otherwise what she does is she jumps onto the chair that I'm sitting on. And she takes over most of it. She doesn't leave me any space. She says that's not true. She says she leaves me half the chair. Okay Stella, that's true. You leave me half the chair. So I can sit on half the chair. And you can sit on half the chair, right, Stella? And it's very cozy like that. But it's also cozy when you have your own chair next to me, right? So I give you your own chair, which you're laying on now. So I could get work done, right, Stella? Okay. It's 6 p.m. Look how Simba's sleeping. Simba is sleeping and he's using the window as a pillow. He heard me click the camera on so he just opened his eyes but he was totally sleeping. He sleeps in such weird positions. I don't know how he gets comfortable like that. Simba, you're such a handsome boy. Simba, you have such beautiful fur. Simba, you have a cute nose. Simba, you have such lovely eyes. It's 8.25 p.m. right now and I just gave Hydrox some dinner so he's having some of the homemade raw food. And he has new rocks. I was at the beach the other day and I picked up some new rocks for him. So I hope he likes the new rocks. And I hope he comes and eats. He's right here. Eat some food, Hydra. Go ahead, eat it. And here's Simba. Hey, Simba. Simba's waiting for dinner also. It is 8.30 p.m. and the inside cats are eating their dinner. And they're having homemade raw food with a few dried minnows. Kind of crushed up dried minnows in the middle and a few crunchies around the edges. There you go, boo. Splash, eat your food. There you go, Splash. The cats had a live stream today and it just finished a little while ago. And Simba was on the bed and Boo was on the bed and Boo's getting to be very good on the bed in front of the camera. He kept looking at the camera when I was trying to get him to look at the camera. So that was really good. Boo was very cooperative. And we want to give a shout out to Kitty Cat B Flat for their super chat. Thank you so much for your support. It's 8.41 a.m. I just walked into the kitchen. And Simba's been in his usual spot looking under the refrigerator. How you doing, Simba? There he goes. How you doing, Simba? Did you sleep okay? Good morning, Stella. Simba!
Here's Boo. He's on top of the cat tower. He's been running around the house this morning. I gave him the brown one to play with. He doesn't want it. And here's Simba. Simba says, where's that brown one? Sorry, Simba. I just lost it. I threw it at Boo and then it bounced away and I don't know where it went. I don't know where it went, Simba. You're going to have to find it. You're going to have to hunt it, Simba. Hunt that pom-pom. Hello, Boo. It's 9.50 a.m. and Hydrox is eating his breakfast and these are his new rocks. And I came outside and I put the camera on and that's why he kind of backed away a little bit. There he is right now. He's kind of walking to the automatic feeder. I still have to put new, um, I have to refill the automatic feeder. It's 11.22 a.m. This is how Stella wants to sleep. There was just a swatting fight between Boo and Splash. There's Splash. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. Good morning, Simba. Good morning, Splash. What you doing, Simba? You looking for your pom-poms? Good morning, Boo. So, last night, the cats had a catnip party here on the rug, and that's what Boo is still rolling around in. So, what I did was I just sprinkled some catnip, like, all over this rug. And the cats had a good time. They didn't have as good a time as I thought they would. Well, Stella did. Stella had a really good time. And Splash had a bit of a good time, but Boo and Simba not so much. I don't know if they were afraid of getting bought by Stella or what, but Boo's still rolling around in the catnip. There's still some dried catnip. It was dried catnip. And um, the cats haven't had catnip in a while. And today I'm going to vacuum the rest of it up. And yeah, so did you have fun last night, Boo? Did you have fun? The cats all get brushed in the morning before they eat their breakfast. Splash is the first one that I brush. He walks away from me usually as I brush him and he doesn't like it when I talk and brush him at the same time. Um, and then Simba's usually next and then Stella and then Boo. Usually that's the order. Sometimes it's not the same order but I just find that having this sort of daily routine gives the cats uh, something to look forward to other than you know, just eating their breakfast. They all know to be down here to be brushed. And by doing it consistently on a daily basis, it definitely keeps the amount of hair that they shed much lower than it would be if I only brushed them occasionally. And sometimes Stella gets in a mood where she doesn't really want to be brushed like right now and some days she just she can't get enough brushing so she's a little bit moody like that and this is Boo's routine he normally just hangs out up here now because he likes looking out the back door and you know looking at Hydrox if Hydrox is there or ditto so what I have to do a lot of times is shut the back door and what Boo likes to do is he likes to come all the way up here into the living room on the play rug and he likes to be brushed here sometimes sometimes he lets me brush him downstairs it just depends on what kind of mood he's in don't forget he's had some catnip this morning so and when I brush Boo he likes to 
rub himself up against other things. Yesterday I filmed the cats being brushed and Stella was not in the mood to be brushed. But today, like, she is so happy to be brushed. Right, Stella? She's saying, brush me more, brush me more. She's already been brushed about 30 times. Like I count one, two, three, four, five. You know how they used to say like brush your hair a hundred times. So I make sure I do at least 30 on each cat. And um, it's good when Splash lets me do 30. That's how I kind of started counting when I was brushing Splash. I wanted to see like, okay, how much can I brush him? So I'm just going to count how many times I could brush him. So today Stella is really enjoying being brushed. There was just a swatting fight between Boo and Splash. There's Splash. There's Boo. It was right here. There was a swatting fight. I don't know if Boo's in a bad mood today or if Splash did something. I'm trying to prepare their meal. Sim is backing away. The cats just ate their breakfast and I'm just about to clean up. And last night, I had a dream that there was a chicken shortage, that I was in a store looking for food, and there was no chicken. Right, Stella? There was like a bag, it was like an open bag of chicken wings that I ended up buying because it was like all they had. And that was like it. It was, it was crazy. And I remember thinking I better look at a few other stores and see if they have chicken but can you imagine that's what that's what I was dreaming about I was dreaming about chicken and a chicken shortage so it might be because I just made raw food for the cats the other day and I don't have a backup of any frozen chicken so um, for the past few months I've had quite a bit of frozen chicken in the freezer so that I can make raw food for the cats and just in case there were any issues um, with like lockdowns and stuff and I've just gone through all of it. I think I have one whole chicken left and I have a few um, a few quails um, that I did not use in this batch of food so it's not like I don't have any food for the cats and I just made the raw food but um, because we're living in uncertain times right now um, I feel like I need to go out and buy some, some more chicken to keep the freezer stocked up. I also have, um, some canned food for the cats and some dry food for the cats. But I guess it's the prepper in me that just wants to make sure that they're set for a few months. You know, if there should be more issues with, like, supply chains or... Or anything like that so what I might do is go out and pick up some chicken today and just have it I'm here with Simba and I'm here with Boo and it is mail time let's open some mail guys Simba smelling it What do you smell, Simba? Okay, he gave it his approval. He says he approves. Okay, looks like the cat's got a letter. You got a letter? Did you get Simba a letter? Now Simba's stretching out like boo. This says, hi lucky ferals. I'm a fan. I like your cats. I don't have anything to give you. Sorry. I don't have anything. So yeah, how are you doing? Hope you are doing good and I hope your cats are doing good too. Yeah, I'm doing good. The cats are doing good. Thank you so much for your letter. It doesn't say who wrote this. There's no name on the letter. Oh, the envelope says this is from Carlos DeLuca. Thank you so much, Carlos, for your lovely letter. 
Okay, let's open this one. What does this one say? It looks like another letter. This says, hi, Luck Ferrells, how are you and your cats? My fan, I don't have anything to give you. My sorry, because I don't have anything to give you. That's okay. This letter is more than enough. Thank you so much for this letter. And the envelope says this is from Carlos DeLuca. Thank you very much, Carlos. And what do we have here? What is this? Is it a letter? Is it a note? Looks like a ghost note. This says, hi, Lucky. I send you a package on August 6th. Okay. Maybe I'll be opening your package now. And that's from Carlos De Luca. And what is this? Is this a package? Oh, look. Look what I got. I got some antibacterial moist wipes. These always come in handy. Thank you very much. And that was from Carlos De Luca. And there's Simba's tail, and there's Boo's feet. And here's a package. Let's open up this package. Let's see what the cat's got. What'd you guys get? The cats are all stretching. Check this out. It's a piece of artwork. It says, thinking of a master plan. That's really cool. There's no card inside. The package says it's from Namita, N-A-M-I-T-A. -A. So thank you very much, Namita, if you sent this. This is really cute. I'll put this on the shelf in Boo's room. And here's another package for the cats. Okay, what do we have here in this package? What's here? I think this is from Carlos. Look, I think I see a ghost. Okay, what do we got? Yeah, this one is from Carlos. It has his information on the other side. Here's a flashlight. That's cool. Look, it has like a clip on top. That's pretty awesome. You can always use flashlights. Oh, and here's some batteries. Some batteries for the flashlight. Oh, look at this cute little toy. Look at the little mouse. Isn't the mouse cute with the string on it? And this says, love me, love my pet. That's adorable. I'll put that on the shelf in Boo's room. Thank you very much, Carlos. And what is this? And what is this? I don't really even know what this is. Oh, is this a battery tester? Is that what this is? Does this test batteries? It looks like it might. It says replace weak and good. Ooh, look at this catnip. I was just thinking the other night that I need to get some more catnip for the cats. And look, look what they got. They got catnip. And they got a bag of Nine Lives Daily Essentials dry cat food. Thank you very much. Oh, check this out. Look, it's one of those lights. This will this will need batteries, but it's one of those touch lights. Touch it, put the light on. That's cool. And here are some Halloween lights. These are orange mini lights. Five feet of orange mini lights. Maybe I'll decorate Hydrox's shelter for Halloween and I can use these on a shelter. Thank you so much, Carlos, for your wonderful package of gifts. Boo says, thank you very much. Simba says, thank you very much. And here's another package. It feels like it might be a book. Check this out. It is Miss Olive Finds Her Forever Friends. I don't know if you guys remember, but 
I think it was a year ago or a little more than a year ago that I read Miss Olive Finds Her Forever Home to the Cats. They love that book. And this is the new book from Miss Olive. Now she finds her forever friends. Written by Susan Marie and Miss Olive. Illustrated by Kim Ranson and Rebecca Phillips. That is so cool. I will be reading this to the cats in a future story time. And look, it came with the photo of Miss Olive. Isn't she cute? This is Miss Olive in real life. And there's Miss Olive in the book. It is 8.41 p.m. and Hydrox is eating some food. He's getting some homemade raw food with water mixed in. And this entire back step was power washed today. It looks so much nicer. And most of the patio was also power washed today. There's still a few sections um, that need uh, to be finished, but for the most part, it's a lot cleaner. And I don't know where Hydrox was all day. I did not see him this morning or this afternoon, so must be hanging out somewhere. You look marvelous, Stella. You look so pretty. She's so happy. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. It is 8.45 a.m. and this is Boo's food. And today I set a stopwatch because I wanted to see how long it took me to do all the morning cat chores. So in the morning, I give the cats fresh water and then I scoop out the litter and then I give Hydrox food and then I brush the inside cats and then the inside cats get breakfast and then I have to wait for them to eat and then I have to, um, you know, coax Boo to eat. I have to get Boo out of his habit of you know, not eating any food until there's crunchies on it and not finishing his food downstairs, but finishing it upstairs. I have to get him out of that habit, but it seems to be the quickest and easiest way um, just to get him to eat without the other cats eating his food. Like, I don't know what you saw, but I came upstairs and Simba was now eating what's left of Boo's food. So I'm either going to have to just pick up his food and say, okay, you're not eating it now. I'll save it for you for later, but no one else is eating it or that's probably what I'll have to do. Whatever he does not eat downstairs, I'll just pick it up and put it aside for him. Um, so anyway, I set a stopwatch today to see how long like all of that took, and it took 40 minutes. So 40 minutes of my morning is spent on cat chores. I think that's a lot of time. Personally, I think that's a lot of time to spend on cat chores. I feel like if I only had one cat or two cats, it would be a lot less time. Obviously it would because I wouldn't have as many water bowls, I wouldn't have as many litter boxes, I wouldn't have uh, as many meals. So maybe it would only be 20 minutes, maybe it would be 10 minutes per cat. I've been wondering, I'm like, well, where's all my time going? Why don't I have enough hours in the day to do everything? Stella got caught. Sim was minding his own business on top of the cat tower. Stella just jumped on it and was smacking him for no reason. She does this. This is the thing she does. And look at Simba. Sim is not happy. She knows that the camera's on.
Good boy, Simba. Good boy. A lot of times what Stella will do is like she'll just keep smacking Simba until he jumps off and then she takes the cat tower. But because the camera's on, she didn't do that. And here's Splash. Splash says, what's going on here? What's going on? It's 2 p.m. and here's Simba laying on the kitchen floor near the refrigerator. How you doing, Simba? It's 10.18 p.m. I'm watching TV and Stella wants me to show you how pretty she looks in her pink boa. Stella, you're gorgeous. You are so gorgeous in your pink boa. She says she loves it. And while she's wearing it, she's hunting snakes. She says she can look fabulous while hunting snakes. Right, Stella? Right, Stella? Stella. Stella, you look fabulous. You look marvelous, Stella. You look so pretty. She's so happy. Stella, you are happy in your boa? The flickerings from the TV, I'm sorry about that. Splash, how does your mommy look in the boa? He says she looks pretty. Hello, Simba. It's 7 a.m. and Stella wanted me to put her boa back on her. So this is what she does. She sits in the scratch and roll and I put the boa on her and then she sits here. She loves this. This is her throne and this is her boa and she's a queen. There's Simba and those are two bottles of water I still have to put away. Here's Boo. Boo got lots of pets this morning. Last night I gave Simba a new pom-pom. It was a yellow one and now it's gone. Simba, where's your pom-pom? Where's your pom-pom? Where's the pom-pom? And yesterday, I ordered Boo some dragonflies with the gift cards from Eileen. Thank you very much, Eileen. Boo is going to love his dragonflies. They should be here in a few days. So Stella has been walking around the house in her boa this morning. And then she's walking around the house without her boa. And I don't know where her boa is. I've looked everywhere. It's not upstairs. It must be downstairs somewhere. Look where I found Stella's boa. Look at this. In the litter box. Now, is Stella making a statement that she doesn't like this boa? I might have to throw it out if it's covered in you know what. Hello, Simba. Simba's been laying in this round cat bed in this little slice of sun. Of course, the minute I turn the camera on, he decides to get up. Hey, doing, Simba? Hmm? And who's walking in? Is that Boo? That's Boo. I could tell Boo because he walks like a dog. When Boo's walking around the house, he sounds like a dog. His paws, the way the paws clicked on the floor. <laughs> Boo says he wants some pets and that he's very beautiful and everyone should tell him how beautiful he is. Boo's very vain also. Boo, you're so vain. You're so vain. He loves playing with the snake under a scratch and roll. What you doing, Boo? Look how shiny he is. Boo, you're so shiny. And here's Simba. The cats are all sleepy because they've been taking naps. Hello, Boo. Today has been the kind of day where like all kinds of things pop up that are kind of unpleasant to do or that like you don't want to do but you have to get done. So that's what my day has been like. I've been just sitting at the table working on computers and uh, getting stuff done. Right, Boo? Right, Simba? 
Simba wants to play. Simba wants to play with Boo. Let's see. Boo. Boo. Be nice to Simba. Boo, you be nice to Simba. So yesterday, the reverse happened where um, Boo was hanging out on the bed and then Simba jumped. Uh, I think he jumped off of the cat tower toward Boo or near Boo and uh, chased him. So I think the two of them just kind of get back at each other. It's 5.26 p.m. Look at Splash. He looks so happy on top of the cat tower. And look at his little toes. In her Stella, she's laying on the bed. The cats were not on the bed all day. Stella just jumped up here, probably within the last hour. I'm just about to go for a bike ride. There's supposed to be a storm coming, and I want to get some riding in before it gets here. Here's Boo and Stella on the bed. So the storm just got here. It is pouring out, and it is really windy, and I only got to go a mile before I said I better come back because it was starting to thunder pretty loud. So I was probably inside only a few seconds before the skies opened and it started really raining. So hopefully this will pass quickly also, but uh, Stella was laying on the bed so then I laid down next to her and then Boo came and laid on the bed so the two of them are just gonna hang out and I put this toy between them. I was like, okay, no fighting, just put the toy between you guys. Boo likes Stella, and sometimes she gets mad at him, and vice versa. So these two, they really like each other. They love each other, but sometimes they just don't get along. It's raining pretty hard out. I don't know where Hydrox is. I was looking for him before, but I did not see him. So he's hopefully off sheltered someplace. Now Boo wants to look out the windows with me. So one thing that I did notice, which I thought was really weird, was when I tried to go for a bike ride, I had no energy. It was bizarre. It was like I had no energy. So I kept... Um, putting the gear lower and the gear lower and I still had no energy and I was like something in the air what is this because yesterday I had a ton of energy and I haven't felt like that and I don't even know how long like I literally had no energy it took um, like everything just to do that one mile and I only went around the block a few times because I didn't want to go too far um, because I knew the storm was on the way so Maybe it's something in the air before a storm. Or maybe there's something in the air during a storm. I don't know, it's really weird. Hello Hydrox. It is 7.45 p.m. And I just got home a little while ago. I went back out to finish my bike ride. And it was fine. After the storm, I rode more miles and I had energy. And I could have stayed out longer if uh, the days were not getting shorter. Um, but I had to be back because I wanted to get some yard work done, which I finished and now I'm about to feed the cats their dinner And I just looked and here's Hydrox, but it reminded me that I want to tell you about Ditto So when I was on my second bike ride, I was about three blocks away from here And who do I see on the sidewalk? Ditto! He's just hanging out there So I rode past him and when I realized it was him, I turned around and I came back to where he was and I stopped my bike and I was like, hey Ditto, how are you doing? And he looked at me and he was trying to figure out who I was. And I know 100% it was Ditto. I know 100% it was Ditto. I totally recognized him. Um, so then when I tried moving closer to him, he scooted under a car and then across the street and then into someone else's yard and under their car. Um, but it was definitely Ditto, same back leg, same face, same everything. Um, I was kind of shocked to see him so far away. Um, 
you know, three blocks might not sound like much, but usually when I see him, he's, I would say, within a couple hundred yards of this house. So um, it was uh, a much bigger distance, but I have seen Hydrox there in the past also. Um, like last year, I saw Hydrox in that area also. So maybe there's like a prime hunting ground over there. Like maybe one of those yards over there has some, some mice or something in it. So, um, or maybe there's another person that's leaving food out there. I don't know. Um, but I did see Ditto and I remember thinking, oh, he looks like he put on some weight. So as I'm filming this, um, today was the day that uh, the mukbang with Ditto video posted. And he was so thin in that video. Like, I touched him and I pet his back that day and he was literally skin and bones. I, I hate it when you pet a cat and you feel like every single bone in their body. And that's what it was like when I fed Ditto that day. Um, so it's, it's good to uh, see that maybe he put on a little bit of weight because he did not look as thin as he was. And um, yeah, he looks like he was doing really well. So here's Hydrox and I'm gonna put some food out for him. And here's Boo and Boo wants to know why I'm talking to you. Boo says, why am I standing outside here talking to a camera and looking at Hydrox when Boo needs to be fed? Okay, Boo. Hello, Splash. You hanging out on the play mat? Three cats, all waiting for crunchies. This is what Boo has done to a chair in the living room. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, and Boo, the Lucky Ferals. And I've tried many different things to get him to stop scratching on this. So um, here is like a blanket that I've had um, hanging over this arm. Um, but he either goes under this or he just tears it off and here is a scratching post that I've put here also and He'll go around it or he'll push it out of the way. He's a strong cat and For some reason he just loves Scratching on this chair and I'm not happy about it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this up and Then I'm gonna put some sticky paws on it because those tend to work pretty good this is a fabric shaver that I have. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shave down um, what I can on this fabric. So you just, uh, you turn it on. That gives you an idea, but I will go over this again a few more times and whatever I can't get off with the fabric shaver, I'm going to get like um, a very small pair of scissors and um, clip off whatever's left. This is what the arm looks like after I clipped off as much as I could. Um, you could still see a lot of the white. These are white threads that are being pulled through this brown material and that's the issue. So. They're all flush with the material, it's just you could still see them because they're white and the material is brown. So I'm just gonna leave it like this for now, uh, but I am gonna put the sticky paws on it so it does not get worse. These are the sticky paws. It says, don't declaw, get sticky paws. Uh, and it deters inappropriate elimination, that's what it says. Uh, no scratching, stop cats from destroying furniture, transparent, apply directly to fabric. Medical grade adhesive won't harm fabric or cats. Easy to apply and remove. Use on countertops, stereo speakers, drapes and carpets or anywhere you don't want kitty to be. There are 24 strips per package. Now in the past I've used this on the sofa and it worked good. Um, the only issue is you have tape. Uh, so it's basically like clear tape, almost like packing tape but double sided packing tape. And it comes in these strips which you peel off and you put on the furniture. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna put some of this on the arm of the chair. So it's basically a sticker with a backing 
and what you do is you peel the paper off and see how it leaves the tape on there so that is like double-sided tape on this chair uh, so that's what's going on here and hopefully this will deter Boo from scratching on it the question is where is he going to scratch if he doesn't scratch on here? Hopefully on the scratching post, it's right next to it. And that's what it looks like with the sticky paws on the chair. It's not very pretty, um, but hopefully it'll just keep him away from this right now so it doesn't get worse. Here's a quick update on the sticky paws. It is now about three or four weeks later, and uh, the tape has definitely helped the cats not scratch on this part of the chair. Uh, Boo has now started scratching a part of another chair, um, which I will hopefully put some tape on soon. And I don't know if you could see it, but there are some puncture holes in the tape, so it looks like someone has tried to use it, um, but it definitely has deterred the cats. And there's also quite a bit of cat hair stuck to the tape, uh, so it looks like either the cats have been rubbing up against it or maybe when they try to scratch on it uh, then it pulls off some of uh, the cat hair uh, but that's the situation these definitely work they definitely stop cats from scratching on furniture are they the prettiest things ever no they don't blend in very well with this fabric this is kind of like a velvet type fabric um, with some fabrics they blend in better than others and they definitely act as a deterrent the hope is that when you pull these off then the cat doesn't go back to scratching uh, where these were. Um, that this is more like a training method, so it trains the cats, okay, don't scratch here, and then when these come off, they continue not to scratch there. So, I just wanted to make that quick update. Thank you for watching this Lucky Earls video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you'd like me to post more videos, and please make sure to check out these other videos that were selected especially for you.